Ha! On October 25th, 2012, this is pulling you number 80, strong jump shifts with 65. Aloha and welcome, Bridge friends. This is Michael here, back from Kauai, at Bridge Hands, and welcome you to our next in our series on strong jump shift hands. Now, in the past episode, we were dealt weak preemptive hands, medium strength opener hands, where we made help suit game try rebids, and responder sign offs, and a wide assortment of strong jump shift hands with shapely hands like 5521. 5431, and so on. Now, on this lesson, we will take a look at those freak distributional hands with a 6 5 shape. And as before, we will continue to show you hands where we can use our favorite tools, including suit quality, losing trick count, self sustaining suits, and cover cards. Yet, as we all know too well, in real life, playing distributional hands can be particularly challenging without a good partnership fit. So, it's only right that here on our Bridge Hands lessons we give both the Declare and the Defender a liberal dose of reality. After all, you do want to get your money's worth, right? So on part one we will start right off with a challenging 6-5-1-1 shape with so-so opening values and a stray singleton honor. Hmm. Sometimes on the first hand the bidding and the play is a bit lax or what I affectionately call is the FHS or the first hand syndrome where a player is not completely at the table, if you know what I mean. And please, do not ask me how I am personally familiar with this situation. On part two, for our members that have signed up for free premium and ultra memberships, at our bridgehands.com website, we have several variations of Declare and Defender play to hone in on the good, the bad, and the ugh lines of play. Incidentally, these initial hands are an adaptation of hands presented by world-class professional and leading author Eddie Cantor, offered in his Test Your Play column. Then in part three, for our premium and ultra members, we have seven more hands to bid and play those six five come alive holdings, including an opportunity to replay Eddie's original hands in the face of competitive bidding. And as always, from time to time, we will change a card here or there to test both your bidding and play. After all, knowing what to do is all well and good, yet knowing when to do it is golden. Incidentally, while the two 6-5 hands, the 6-5-1-1 and 6-5-2-0, each only come up 7 tenths of 1% of the time, all the tips, tricks, and traps that come up here still apply to hands with 5-5 shape that occur 4% of the time. Okay? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. See you at the table, not at the beach. Okay, Bridge friends, we're here at the table and ready to try hand number one, and let's see how we do with these six five hands. Okay, south is the dealer, and indeed, six spades, five hearts, singleton diamond, singleton club. Oh, we like having six five in the major suits. Later on in another lesson, we'll take a look at the minors, but today we'll have at least one six card suit in the majors, so good for us. And our high card points, well, we have ace, queen, jack, six times in spades. That is seven high card points and a couple distribution for our six card suit. Gets us up to about nine. In hearts, queen, jack, five times, another three there, 10, 11, 12, and maybe one distribution for our five card suit. And a singleton club and a king of diamonds, a kingleton. Hmm, what's that worth? I don't know maybe two, subtract one for a singleton. So we've got about a 15, 16 point hand. We're not really sure though, are we? But before we do that, let's take a look at the lesson we've been going over many times. That is on suit quality. And what is our suit quality in our long suit? Well, that would be spades. And in spades, we have three honors and six long. That's nine, six and three is nine. Nine is a Good. Semi-self-sustaining suit if you've got our other lessons. So with a semi-self-sustaining suit or a self-sustaining suit, that is 10 or more, we now can go ahead and independently start taking a look at our losing trick count. Now way back, a couple lessons ago, you recall that we normally had a partnership fit before we started taking a look at our losing trick count. But when we have autonomously a semi-self-sustaining suit or better, and certainly in spades, it looks like we shouldn't lose more than one loser. That is, if our partner at least has a singleton and we've got one finesse opportunity that works, we should be able to take five of the six tricks, shouldn't we? 
So let's take a look at our losers. Remember, we don't count the ace, king, queen unless it's the side suit, queen, third. But in this case, that's not an issue. So in spades, we have one loser. Okay, after the first three, we don't count any losers. In hearts, we have, looks like two losers, the ace and the king. Then the queen is going to take her third. Anything beyond that, we don't count for losers. Recall for losing trick count. So there's one, two more losers there. Brings us up to three. And it could be two losers in the minors. Not sure about that diamond. Maybe that's a half loser. I don't know. Maybe your Ouija board's better than mine. But it looks like it's about a five loser hand, perhaps. So, um, yes, we want to go ahead and bid this as though if we hear something from our partner, we're very inclined to go to game. If our partner bids, they should have two cover cards. Five take away two is three losers. Sounds like a four spade game to me, unless we have a hard fit. Let's see where we go. So our opening bid would be one spade. Not a two club opener, please. Okay, over to the west hand. It is a six, three, two, two shape in clubs. Ace, king, six times, seven high, two distribution is nine. In hearts, three, 10, 11, 12. It's almost enough for a two club bid, isn't it? Some of you may want to, others would not take the risk. Now the vulnerability, by the way, this is the third hand, south is a dealer. And if you're playing four deal bridge, sometimes called Chicago bridge or duplicate bridge, the north, south are not vulnerable and east, west are vulnerable. So they would want to take it easy. In this case, we're gonna have our west is gonna pass. Then over to north. North has a six, three, two, two also. No surprise. Oftentimes we have one shape of hand, the others around the table have similar shape patterns. And in this case in diamonds, ace, ten, six times, four high. In clubs, queen, doubleton, another two is six. In spades, king, ten, our partner suit. Well, we're glad we've got two honors. That's nine high, but a doubleton. Uh, do you want to bid two diamonds? Do you want to count distribution points for that six card suit? Well, sort of. You're, you're glad that at least it's ace six times, but if it was ace queen, ace jack ten, ace king, great, then you would count the distribution because you have some good beefy cards to get back to the hand. But with an ace and out, it's a little close. I don't think you want to bid two diamonds with nine high. I wouldn't count two distribution points for this one. One no trump sounds right. I know it doesn't feel good when you've got a six, three, two, two, but let's bid one no trump for now and see where it goes. Over to the east hand. It is a four, four, three, two. Somebody's on it. Somebody's got a flat hand here, and that's the most common shape in all of bridge, the four, four, three, two shape. Although not many points um, in clubs and diamonds, it's four, four. Queen, jack, eight, seven in diamonds. Jack, ten, four times in clubs. Ace, ten in hearts, and three mediums in spades. No bid. Pass. Uh, back to south. Okay, you've heard your partner bid one no trump. They don't have 10 points or more. They're not bidding one of your short suits, which you kind of almost expected. Somebody's got to have a lot in the minor since you've got singletons there. So what do you want to rebid? Do you want to rebid two spades, three spades, four spades, two hearts, three hearts? A lot of bids here you can bid. No trump is obviously not what we want with the 6-5 shape. Well, I think probably three hearts, a strong jump shift is in order. Now, normally we want 19 to 21 points to make a strong jump shift, a game forcing hand. But in this case, despite that we have 13 points with a singleton king, uh, we do have some other things. Recall that it looks like it's about a five loser hand. And if our partner can cover two losers, game is a stride. So we have wonderful shape in these major suits. Some of you may think it's a little bit aggressive and want to go two hearts. I wouldn't fault you for it, but I think that three hearts is a better bid to force game. Four hearts, what's that? Well, nobody knows. I, tell you, I took a look in the Alan Truscott bidding dictionary from yesteryear. Uh, it's nothing. There's no agreement on it. Partnership dependent. Even the bridge world pros, they're not sure what it means. It would be a partnership dependent call. So, okay, we're going to rebid three hearts. It's a pass by West and our partner. Well, up in North, hmm, is it going to be four hearts or four spades? 
Well, we don't know that south has five hearts. It could be done with four. We've seen it in previous lessons where it can be a 5, 4, 3, 1 or a 5, 4, 2, 2 shape. So I think most Norse are going to say, well, I've got two beefy spades and that's the suit I will support. I will bid four spades. After four spades, a pass by east should south go on. No, they don't have that many high card points. And if there was only one no trump by north, they don't have three cover cards. So with our five losers, you would need four cover cards to go to slam anyway, wouldn't you? Unless that singleton king somehow produced a lot of extra tricks in the north end. No, we're going to play in four spades. That's enough. Okay, and the auction passes out, and the lead is up to west. Now, west, your lead is pretty obvious, isn't it? We don't like to lead unprotected aces. It's as bad as underleading an ace. But when we have ace-king, that's certainly the suit we want. So we're going to lead an ace of clubs. Eight comes from the dummy. Over in east, they play a five. We're going to talk more about that in future hands. And we play our singleton from south. So, um, not sure that there's any better signal. Now, taking a look at the west, you don't really want to play diamonds particularly with a six times in the dummy. You take a look at the heart suit and you see three so-so in the north hand. And you heard south bid three hearts, so that doesn't feel so good. If you're going into a ace-queen that might be perhaps in the south hand. So you'll probably go ahead and continue your clubs. You see a queen's left and you'll go ahead and win that with your king. So you play a king, queen. Uh, a seven comes from east. East, I'm not sure what your carding is here. We're going to talk about that in some detail. And we're going to rough in in the south since we only had a singleton club. Okay, our play strategy. Well, obviously, we would like to promote that heart suit, a side suit that we would like to promote. We don't really have any roughing potentials here. And we have that singleton king, and we see that there's a ace in the dummy. Now, you may be tempted to go ahead and play the king and then get over to the other side, play the ace and pitch. But what are you going to pitch? Hearts? Well, you've got to promote hearts. So it's kind of a fruitless proposition, but it feels good, and this south just cannot avoid doing it. We'll talk more about that later too. Okay, we play the king and over to west, good on you. You played a nine from nine four doubleton, a high low to show count to your partner in the opponent's suit. And uh, play low obviously from the north hand, although you could cover with the ace, it wouldn't matter. We'll talk about that more. And an eight comes from the east hand. They're playing a high low count signal from four. That's good. Okay, after that, um, I guess we want to get to the dummy is what we're going to do next. So we're going to play a low spade up to the king. Both of them follow. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and I guess we're going to have to try that heart suit. It's good to go to the closed hand. Now, nobody else can see the closed hand in south, correct? So we're playing a finesse to this queen jack. If ace king are over in one hand, the east hand, good. If they're both in the west hand, not so good, unless the 10 falls doubleton. And that really is part of the name of the game, isn't it? If one of the opponents has two honors, we're in good shape, especially if we split with the 10. If on the other hand, one of them has two honors and three, which is not uncommon at all, we've got a little bit of a problem. At any rate, over to the dummy hand, we're going to go ahead and play the ace. Pitching a heart, as I say, it feels good, but it doesn't really help at all. More on that later. And now we're going to go ahead and play our heart. Now, if we want the opponents to cover a card, if we want to tempt them, we're going to play the highest one we can afford. We're going to play a nine. If we don't want them to, then we'll play a four. So, yeah, let's play our nine and see if we can encourage a ten. We play a nine. Sure enough, east covers it with a ten. Questionable. More on that bid or play later. We play our jack and a king comes. So good, we've seen two honors. This is a perfect day. Life is good as long as east is not singleton 10. So we hope that's not the case. All right, so um, a spade comes back by the west hand. Very good play. Might as well go ahead and start getting some of their trump out. You don't want to play anything else. So after that, we can see that they're going to play the queen of hearts south. They get the ace of hearts out. And that is eight hearts played. Remember, 
we have um, started with uh, eight in our hand. So with the opponents each playing twice, that's four for them. They've got one left, and it's a low one. So we're in good shape. So we can let them play their jack of clubs, good lead. We rough it. We go ahead and play our ace of spades. And then we can go ahead and play our queen of spades and play our last two hearts to make our four spade game. Okay, so recapping the hand, you recall that South had the 6-5, 1-1 shape with 13 high, including the singleton king. Was um, one spade the right bid? Yes, that was a good first bid. And how about the strong jump shift to three hearts? Seems like a reasonable bid. Some of you would want to bid two hearts. We understand that. But let's take a look at it this way. Uh, North had nine high card points. Is that average? Exactly average. Why is that? Well, if there's 13 points there, 40 in the deck is high card points we're counting. That leaves 27 left. Three players left, three into 27, nine. So yeah, it's our partner had an average hand for what was left over. So um, the shape, they didn't have quite the spades we would have liked. The original hand that Eddie Cantor had will have three spades. We'll come to that in our third part. But for our hand here, it serves the same illustrative purposes, is that after we get some sort of a bid from north, in this case, we want it to be something other than two spades, so we can do a strong jump shift. We want to do three hearts. So the bidding goes one spade, one no trump, three hearts, and either four hearts or four spades. That's a toughie. We'll look at that a little bit more in subsequent hands also. The opening lead, the ace of clubs, and over by the east hand, that was a what? A five of clubs? What kind of a signal is that? I guess it's discouraging. Um, we're going to come back to that one. There's a much better play. Maybe not obvious, but there is a much better play. One error right there. Okay, going on, they play the king of clubs then on the second one. Natural then for West to do that. Okay. And so we get in, we play the king of diamonds in the south. Uh, not a harmful play, but if you want transportation to the north end, you might as well overtake it with the ace. We'll talk about that error a little later also. And then we play a spade up to the king, fine. And then we come back with the ace of diamonds, pitch doesn't really help any, okay, no big deal. And then we play the heart, oops, that was an error. We got a gift, we gave back a gift. Um, East, you're covered with the ten. Another gift, three gifts. Okay, then a spade comes to the jack. We play a heart. Ooh, what if the hearts broke badly? There'd be another rough. Two errors for the declarer. We're evened. Two errors both ways, aren't there? And at that point, we can go ahead and clear it out and make our four spade game. We're going to take a look in part two. We're going to go into some of these errors. We're going to look at some different permutations, and we're going to find out different ways that people can make less errors and different lines of play to kind of get our collective act together. So Bridge is a fascinating game. I hope you enjoyed this hand. We've got a lot more coming up on Strong Jump Shifts. Once we go through some permutations on this in part two, in part three, we're really going to get into it with some great 6-5 come alive hands and see, should we be bidding game? Should we be bidding slam? Are there situations where there's some other alternatives? Oh yes, life and Bridge are always fun. Well, Bridge friends, now that we're getting warmed up on the first portion of our lesson looking at 6-5 strong jump shift hands, let's help the declarer and the defenders get their collective acts together in that play phase. As the saying goes, there are the three types of people. The movers and the shakers that lead the way, that makes things happen. Those who are close to supporting and implement the ideas of the movers and the shakers. And number three, those who did not know what happened at all. Now, obviously, none of us knowingly want to be in that last group. So let's take a look at a handful of errors to see where things went awry and help our poor players get out of that third group. Thank you, mahalo, for watching our teaser Bridge Hands lesson on 6-5 Strong Jump Shift Hands. If you're not already a subscriber, now don't delay, come on down to www.bridgehands.com and check out the rest of our Pulling You Lesson number 80. Sign up for our free membership. It's easy without any obligation to join thousands of other subscribers. And better yet, sign up for our three-month premium, our 12-month ultra membership to view this entire lesson, along with hundreds of bridge videos 
on a wide range of topics you will see at the table. Now, Bridge Hands lessons are designed to be enlightening, entertaining, and educational. After all, none of us wants to spend too much time in that last category. Okay, Bridge friends, I'll see you over at the flip side. Happy Bridge Trails!